we are uh, so proud to be in this Jacob Berth Media Center, and I'm pleased to introduce Eric Hayer and James Dolan, who will speak about the green architectural and engineering features of this Jacob Byrne Media Arts Lab, which, by the way, is a LEED Gold certified building. Eric Hayer is a principal with KG&D Architects, the architect that designed the Jacob Burns Media Arts Lab. And Jim Dolan is a partner at OLA and the principal in charge of the mechanical and electrical design for the Jacob Burns Media Arts Lab. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us and uh, thanks for coming to this great building. We really enjoyed designing it. I'm here with my partner, Russ Davidson, and with uh, Jim Dolan and Pat Lynch, who are um, consulting engineers. And we got the great opportunity of partnering with the Jacob Burns Film Center uh, back in 2005 to through 2009 to design and construct this building, as well as with uh, your construction. Uh, and what a great partnership it was, and it was really a, a true collaboration from the beginning to the end. And to do a green building and to achieve LEED gold, uh, you really have to start from the very beginning, and it has to be a collaboration between the owner and the architect and the construction company to achieve uh, what was actually achieved right here. Uh, I noticed on the slide here that Jacob Burns Film Center is now 10 years old. Well, 10 years ago, when we started talking about sustainable projects with clients, they'd look at us cross-eyed or with blank stares, saying, sustainability, what's that? No idea what we're talking about. Or if they did, it's something that, well, if you get the function right and we get looking the way that we want and there's any money left over, okay, we'll do something green just like you want. And actually, this building for a long time had a green elevation because the exterior material was uh, slow at arriving and it was actually the waterproofing and people thought that green was actually that green material. So, <laughs> but five years later, uh, Steve Abcon and the Film Center came to us and said, would you like to work with us? And we want a building that's truly sustainable. And our eyes lit up and said, that would be great. Actually, somebody coming to us asking for something that's sustainable as opposed to us begging and pleading. Uh, today, we're not uh, taking a tour, so we thought that we'd give you a brief tour through pictures in my description. And Jim's description as to what we did on this building that made it a sustainable building. Hopefully, this. Do I point it somewhere special? To the left. To the left. Got it. Uh, this slide right here is uh, from our personal helicopter. <laughs> this is architects, we make that much money. <laughs> we could use those tax credits. Uh, but what you're seeing here is a roof that's actually occupiable. There's events that happen here on occasion. And there's a, a green roof as well as photovoltaics that you can see on the roof. I will figure this one out. Um, and the building is wonderful, whatever, um, but what's truly magnificent about this place is actually the program within it, and that really got us excited. 21st century literacy is a buzzword, which um, we're still trying to figure out what it means, but um, we're getting closer, and with the program, if you haven't been a part of it, you should get involved, you should learn about it, because it's the stuff that the kids are doing, and if you go in the next room over here, you can actually see some of the the films that the kids have done on sustainability and architecture, and it's, it's really very neat. Uh, this is a commitment. It's not just a building. If you go around, you'll see that the plaques uh, throughout the building. It's an educational program that educates about sustainability on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. It's continual, and the Film Center has been dedicated to that. Uh, when do you start the process? Early. You can't start halfway through construction and say, I want a green building. You really have to start at day one. We sat down, we had design charrettes, we uh, went on building tours, we went to the city to see some of the facilities down there, we went throughout the county to see what was being done around here in our own project so that we could discuss what would work and what wouldn't in this case. You can't do everything on every project, so we had to pick and choose even on 
silly like this. Uh, we filmed it. There's quite a few films on uh, the making of, including there's a, another video that's going on there. Every three minutes of, of course, the construction of the project, we photographed the building from the same vantage point. And it's a making of the building in three minutes. And uh, I wish construction was that fast. <laughs> Sustainable pellet features from the site point of view. Uh, we revitalized an existing site. It was a, a, an unused printing press before. We deconstructed the building. 87% of that deconstructed building was diverted from landfill. 87%. All the steel, the concrete, a lot of the other materials did not go into landfill. Uh, the location we talked about. Pleasantville is a wonderful town and that is a walking town. So it's, it's easy for people to walk here, to bike here. There's bike racks right beyond us right here. They're used. There's shower facilities in the building. People do um, bike to work and they, they can shower right here. You have public transportation that's right nearby. Uh, the, the train station right here, there's plenty of people that come up from the city and use this facility from the city and other locations in Westchester County. Other exterior, uh, an easy one is the exterior envelope. We're talking about insulation, we're talking about the materials on the outside. Insulation is one of the easiest and cheapest things you can do to the exterior of the building to, to make it more energy efficient. Use of windows, um, low E, uh, thermally insulated windows, etc. are all excellent examples of what you can do to make a building more sustainable. Uh, recycled content, natural ventilation, again you saw that uh, roof slide if you ever get up on the roof. Look at the photovoltaic panels, about 5 to 10 percent of the energy used in the building is created and, and from the sun. There's a green roof up there. Uh, when we started this process a lot of people didn't know what a green roof was. It's not painting your roof green. It's not the green uh, weeds that grow on your roof uh, when you don't maintain it. It's actually a vegetative roof which uh, reduces the amount of storm water, it lengthens the life of the roof, and in this case it's an attractive thing, a uh, feature to the roof when people go up there to actually use it. That's really an important aspect of it. You shouldn't just put a green roof on a roof just because you can. Um, most projects have cost restrictions and, and hopefully you get to take advantage of the beauty of the green roof as well. Uh, if you get to get up to the corporate offices upstairs, you'll see that there's a, a series of light monitors, and that's what the photograph is right there, is one of the light monitors. Those are north facing. There's also a ribbon band of windows around the perimeter of, of uh, the office. During the day, tonight maybe they turn the lights on if you get a chance to go up there, but in general the lights are never on upstairs. They don't need to be. It's naturally lit. Again, the, one of your largest Uses of energy is in electricity and lighting. If you can leave the lights off, you reduce energy. Uh, also, the fresh air ventilation, there's lots of operable windows up there, so there's cross ventilation. When we started the process, we also talked about what we wanted this place to be and what to look like. And um, being a film center and being about film, we we uh, utilized a lot of sort of concepts and ideas from New York City and theaters, and wanted this to be a place where everything was exposed, and we didn't use materials needlessly. If you go around, and you look up in the ceiling, you see the exposed deck up there. You see all the lighting. You see the ductwork. You see the uh, the sprinkler system. There's no. It's an honest view. There's no reason to to hide it in this case, and and we really glorify it. Uh, this building also is flexible. This space right here and the space up in the balcony are used every day for different purposes. Right now we have a big event right here, but during the day you'll see classes using this constantly. The upstairs just in the last few months has completely be, been changed into a series of small um, group lecture areas and group classroom areas for special projects. Other features uh, in terms of certified well-managed forests, recycled content, manufactured regionally, all these are, are features that uh, are easy to accomplish and things that every project should be looking towards utilizing. And then one of the coolest aspects of this building, if this slide will change, 
are the green facts. If you go through from the bathrooms to the front entrance, there's green facts, there's, a, there's glass plaques that talk about the building. Again, it, it goes back to education. This is an educational facility. They are education, edu educating about sustainability, and that's a critical aspect. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Jim Dole, and he can talk to, about some of the more technical aspects. Uh, thanks, Eric. Yeah, it was great to work um, with KGD on this project, and it was nice to have. We weren't selling sustainability in this project; it was a, it was a demand right from the get-go. Um, but as Eric pointed out, the programming was very uh, challenging. You had acoustical program uh, programming, and uh, I don't think people were able to get in there tonight. But this uh, this Foley Studio has an NC20 rating, which is a very high level of acoustic rating, and you can see in the ductwork there on the on the right, it's a very intense amount of sheet metal that's up above the ceiling and hidden. That's a part of the uh, mechanicals that isn't exposed because of the acoustical considerations. But you had that a lot of, a lot of insulation and, um, and a lot of elbows in order to be able to cool that space and still keep that noise level down. Um, some of the, uh, Eric talked a bit about the lighting efficiency. Um, we also have demand control ventilation in this space in particular. I'm sure the, uh, by now the outside air dampers have opened up and started increasing the ventilation to the space. Uh, if you're standing on this side, you can really hear the, feel the wind um, of the air being pushed into the space and it goes back across up into the uh, rear of it. Also in this particular space, you have uh, um, radiant floor. And so there was challenges. You can see you have this large glass. We have very cold winters here. We had a tough one this year. And uh, radiant floor made a lot of sense. It's a small mezzanine that would heat up if we just did it with forced air. So um, beyond sustainability, there was a lot of design challenges. Again, floor to floor heights, acoustical considerations, things of that nature. Um, but uh, geothermal actually, also again, we had the energy savings from geothermal that were, were, were um, really appreciated. However, it also helped because of the tight site here, not to have a huge condensing unit outside blasting on and off for the uh, residents. So this parking lot behind us, all the way around, there's 30 wells in there. Let me just slide that over. Um, so you can see as it wraps around the building, those are the 30 wells around here, all about 500 feet deep. So that's a closed loop geothermal system, and it's very effective, it's been used around this area. And as much as it's saving 40 to 50 percent of the energy by designing heating and cooling in this method, it also, again, saved on parking space as well as acoustics, which are uh, you know, prime when we start to develop Westchester to be able to put a building like this in a residential neighborhood um, is quite the achievement. So that's another advantage. Uh, heat recovery, uh, outside air ventilation is actually tempered with these large enthalpy wheels that take the normally exhausted air and will exchange that with the intake air and raise or lower the temperature depending on the season. So that well field actually just barely worked for the space. And without heat recovery, the, net, the high performance envelope that KGD designed and low lighting power density, we would have never been able to do it on this site. So. Um, having an intelligent solution to all of these things was critical to making this project happen. Again, solar power is part of the project. It's always nice to see real renewable power on any project. It's not always easy to do. The legislation, the uh, economics change on a monthly basis sometimes. So uh, having a, a smart uh, team to be able to design for it and accommodate it. This actual decision making happened after it really got going on construction. So it was great to see that uh, that this was able to be worked in. Again, that, that took the support of the Jacob Burns Center. I'll finish with um, knowing that this uh, group here is really looking at performance. The real achievement comes after the building is operated. We gave them a building that could be, could be operated efficiently. Uh, Frank and Dominic and the others here at the Burns Center actually operated efficient, efficiently. A normal building in Westchester might be 100 kBTUs. They're operating this building, and as Eric mentioned, it's a, a very intense usage. There's programming going on all the time, and they're usually around 45 kBTUs. So um, it's not just designed to be efficient, it's operated efficiently, which is uh, really ultimately more important, because that's what's going to happen for the length of the building. I'll leave it at that. Uh,